Hello again. Let's talk about three simple steps to finding the perfect running shoe for you. Now, having run for over 35 years, I've gone through my fair share of running shoes, but I've also worked at Roadrunner Sports, one of the leading sellers of running shoes, and I learned a lot about not just the shoes that work for me, but the shoes that work for different runners. The head shoe guy there was Dave Jewell, also known as Super Dave. So I learned a lot of this from him, and I want to share it for you because I know finding the right running shoe can be a challenge at times. Now let's walk through these three steps in finding the perfect running shoe for you. First, it must fit your foot, it must fit your stride, and then it must fit your mechanics. Let's take a look at each of these three. First, when you get a pair of shoes, you're gonna try them on, but don't lace them up. Don't snug them to your foot. Just slip them on your foot and walk around, either in the store, if you've ordered them online, around your house. And the reason is that that shoe should mostly foot fit the shape of your foot without having to tie it. It should mostly feel good without having to lace the shoe tightly. That's what we'll use for refining the fit of the shoe, but the basic fit of the shoe should fit your foot. And the reason I say that is all these shoes are built off of lasts, and this, the shape of the last, these are lasts right here, the shape of that last determines the, sort of the shape of the shoe, and that should really match the shape of your foot. And you probably have experimented with different brands of shoes, and their lasts can sometimes run slightly different in shape. Some of them are more narrow in the heel, wider in the forefoot. Some are narrow in the forefoot, wider in the heel. So you need to find the shape of the shoe that fits your foot. And by just trying it on and walking around, it should feel pretty good. Will it be loose in the heel? Yes. Will it not be as snug as it could be? Yes. But the point is, and this is what I learned from Dave Jewell, is that that shoe should mostly fit your foot without having to do a lot of tying and manipulation of the laces. Next, what you should do is tie it, lace it the way you normally would, and tie it, and then walk around, maybe go for a little run in them, evaluate how's the room in the toe box, the length between your longest toe and the end of the shoe. You don't want your longest toe right up against the end of the shoe. It was always sort of traditional that you'd have the length of width of your thumb between your longest toe and the end of the shoe. That gave your foot a little bit uh, room to move during running. Same for the width. How does it fit in the width of the, the toe box here? Is it tight? That would be bad. Is it too loose so your foot is sliding around? That wouldn't be ideal either. What about the volume, uh, sort of the distance between the top of the upper and the midsole? How much height is in that toe box? Don't want that compressing your foot or rubbing against your foot in a weird way when you're walking around or running. Any place that has hot spots, do a check on that. I always had issues with my longest toe and the end of the shoe, so make sure you've got that buffer here. What about the knuckles, sort of the outside, your pinky knuckle over here sometimes can be a problem, or the big toe knuckle here can be a problem with pinching or being too tight in running shoes. So if you have any of those hot spots, do a real close evaluation of that in the shoe as you're walking around. Now, if that all checks out, the toe box is good. Let's move to the instep. The instep is sort of this middle part of the shoe around your arch and over the top of the your arch part of your foot here, this instep. It should be snug, but not too tight. In other words, it should sort of hug your foot, not be loose to where your, your foot's going to slide around, but not be too tight, particularly on this top area where you'll be lacing. Uh, that's one of the things you can look for. How close will the laces be? Do you have to cinch them so the edges of the shoe are really, really close together and you're really having to cinch that shoe up to fit your foot? That may be a bad sign. Or maybe if the laces are really wide, so the, the sides of the shoe are really wide, you've got a lot of lace across the top of your foot, that may mean that that upper is not the best fit for you. But if it's got a nice snug, feel to it and as you're walking and running it feels like it really holds uh, securely to your foot that's a very good sign 
Now, assuming everything checks out with the instep of the shoe, snug fit, not too tight, not too loose, and certainly no areas of rubbing. You don't have any concern with uh, rubbing when you're walking around or running in the shoe. Let's, let's move to the heel of the shoe. It should be snug in the heel of the shoe once you've tied it. There should be no slipping up and down of the heel in the heel of the shoe and then no sliding of your heel side to side in the heel of the shoe. That would indicate that the shoe is not fitting your foot. And again, this is related back to the shape of your foot and the shape of the shoe. For myself, I like a narrow heel and a wide toe box because my foot is shaped with a narrow heel and a wide forefoot. So that shape of shoe fits my foot very good. If I go into a shoe that has a wide toe box, which I like, but then a wide heel, it won't fit me. It'll be too loose in the heel. So again, you're trying to match the shape of the shoe with the shape of your foot. So let's summarize uh, what we wanna do with this first key to finding your perfect fit. Number one, F lacing is for fine-tuning the fit. When you first slip the shoe on and walk around or uh, without it laced, without it tied, excuse me, uh, it should mostly fit your foot. It'd be a little loose, but you know you can fine-tune that fit with the lacing. If you have to do a lot of l really creative work with the laces and tying to get it to fit your foot, it's probably not the best shoe for you. Almost every shoe brand has tendencies their last have tendencies. Either they're more straight or they're more curved, they're wider in the toe box or narrow in the heel. And try to find brands. You'll start to see that there's certain brands that the last of their shoe really fits your foot. That's very helpful in narrowing your choice. Uh, also, if you've had previous issues with shoes or your foot, that can inform your shoe choice. So if you've had really big problems with rubbing, say on your big toe knuckle in shoes, or you've worn through the shoe in that part, you wanna look, make sure you look for a shoe with a wider toe box. If you had a lot of slipping in your heel uh, because of your, your heel slipping up and down in the shoe, maybe you get rough spots, blisters, calluses, then you wanna make sure you find a shoe with a narrow heel. So this can all be important in helping you choose the best shoe for you. So now let's move on to step number two. So now that we've found that the shoe fits our foot, the second component is does it fit your stride? So as you go for runs in this shoe, and it can be sometimes a really short run to get a feel for this, sometimes you'll have to do a little bit longer sort of test run in the shoes, you want that shoe to fit with your transition, your stride. So where you land and then push off, that should be very smooth feeling. There should never be any clunky or slapping or feeling like the shoe is working against your stride, should work with your stride. In fact, one of the keys is, does it feel like it makes you want to run faster when you put the shoe on? It just naturally flows with your stride. You find yourself kind of going quickly in the shoe. If you find the shoe is kind of working against you or you have to modify your stride to work with the shoe, that's another sign that's not the best shoe for you. But if you find that shoe, fit your foot good, you go out for that run, and boy, it really works with your stride. This shows you're on to something. In fact, I just got a new pair of shoes, and that was exactly the experience I had. Fit my foot when I put it on, and then when I went for a run, it almost encouraged me to run quickly in the shoe. It's a good sign that I'm on the right track with that shoe. So as you do your test, really be thinking, is this shoe working with my stride? Now that we've got step one and two figured out, it's time to actually put some miles on the shoe. And that leads us to key number three. Does the shoe fit your mechanics? And somewhat related to number two in your stride is obviously related to your mechanics. Uh, but this I'm talking about takes a few more miles to really feel. You've got to accumulate some miles on the shoe before you really learn does that wonderful feel that you had with your stride and the, the short test runs that you did in selecting the shoe, does it last over time? Does it really work with your biomechanics? Uh, and your injury risk can be very informative of how much experimentation you should be doing in a shoe. So for example, if you have an area of your body that's frequently injured, it's sort of your Achilles heel, if you will, 
then if that new shoe after five miles, 10 miles, 20 miles, if you start to feel any irritation or concern or discomfort in that area of your body, that's not the right shoe for you. Go ahead and get rid of it because we can't risk an injury in that area again. And if you don't have in in injuries, uh, or if you start to feel some change uh, in a different part of your body than you've ever had a problem with before, you can experiment a little bit longer before you make the decision of, well, this shoe is going to lead me toward an injury or some discomfort or dysfunction that I don't want, or is it going to be okay? I, my body just needed to adapt to slightly different mechanics in running with this shoe. So again, be smart. Don't try to force the shoe to fit you. Make sure it does fit you and works with your mechanics. That's why it's really important to know the return policy of shoes. Most uh, stores and certainly online retailers now have wonderful return policies. You're able to actually put on some miles on those shoes and that helps you kind of learn this key number three of does it really work with your mechanics? It felt good on your stride when you tested them, but what about after you get 5, 10, 20, 30 miles on the shoe? Does it still really encourage these wonderful fit between your mechanics, your stride, and the shoe? Or do you start to notice some areas of discomfort that are a little bit concerning? Again, that's a warning sign. You don't want to use those shoes. That's not the perfect shoe for you. And that's what we're going for. It's what we're talking about in this video. Now, there's another sort of component that can interact with your mechanics and your stride and that's actually how the shoes are built. Shoes have really changed over the last 10 years with lots of different adjustments. Uh, one of the things we've seen a big change in is in the drop of the shoe which is illustrated here on the right. The drop is the difference between the height of the heel and the height of the forefoot. Traditionally uh, in the 70s and 80s most running shoes began to have a, a kind of standardized height difference between the heel and the forefoot. Most of that was to add extra cushioning in the heel and to take some pressure off the Achilles tendon compared to the running shoes of the 1960s. Uh, but then there was a movement of late where we would begin to drop this to have a lower drop in the shoe so the heel is not as high as compared to the forefoot. So you will have a traditional drop in a shoe of maybe 12 millimeters or 13 millimeters. Then you have some shoes that are 10 millimeter drop, eight millimeter drop, six, four, two, and even zero drop shoes. And that's just related to the difference between the heel and the forefoot. So if you have a pair of shoes that you really like now, do some research and figure out what's the drop in that shoe. Because one thing that um, athletes have figured out is that, boy, if, you, if you're in, used to a, a fairly high drop like a 12 millimeter and you go to a two millimeter shoe, that's a significant change uh, on your body. And so sometimes that can irritate uh, areas of the body and it might mean that's too big of a jump of shoe for you at that point. It can be a positive in the long run, but just be aware of a big change in the drop of your shoe is another thing that can um, interact with your mechanics in a positive way, but then it can also be a negative way as well as interacting with your musculoskeletal system. So it's another thing you can just evaluate in that shoe. We also have the stack height in shoes has changed a little bit. We've seen some of the oversized midsoles where you have a very high stack height in shoes. And then we've also seen where there's been almost no stack height. So you can think of like a Vibram Five Fingers has no stack height. You basically just have the outsole and then your foot and then up to things like the Hoka, which has a very tall stack height. And so those can be really positive in that they provide a lot more cushion, but then you're also up higher and there can be stability issues. So you need to just see the interactions uh, of how that shoe is with your mechanics over time. And that's why if you put on a shoe that either has a big stack height and feels really cushy and you love how it feels, well, how will it perform with your mechanics 
out on the terrain you train on over time, that's something you'll have to evaluate. The same with not having a, a, any sort of high midsole, low stack height, and not a lot of cushioning, that can be a real positive as well. But again, it may feel good in your little test runs, but what does it feel like after you put some miles on? So just really reinforcing, put some miles on the shoes, see how it begins to interact with your mechanics and your musculoskeletal system. Uh, be aware of where you have calluses and hot spots and blisters. Uh, we'd like to see those go away. We'd like to see, see a shoe that does not cause those problems uh, anymore. And so that would be a great sign if you saw those beginning to decrease. And you need to look at the pronation rate and extent because obviously that's part of mechanics is that when you land, you roll through from your landing to your toe off. There's a, a slight pronation, but how quick does that happen is important in injury uh, resistance and the extent of it as well. So again, as you run in the shoes more and more, you start to see, is it controlling the pronation and working with uh, correct pronation in your shoe or is it going to cause problems? And obviously, does it have the right amount of cushioning and control? So again, that it works with your mechanics as opposed to against them. So just another thing to think about is not just the color of the shoe or the shape of the shoe, but there's other characteristics like the drop and the, the stack height that you want to see. If you have a pair you already like, try to match that with your new pair and don't do too big of a jump one way or the other. Or if you do, just be put some more miles on and make sure that works with your mechanics. So let's, uh, let's finalize here with just a few kind of uh, summary points. First, it's a constant search. Uh, you have to search for a shoe, you find one, the brand is gonna change that shoe and you probably won't like it again and so you have to search again, start the process over. So it's sort of this ongoing process of trying to find the perfect shoe. But I think these three keys uh, really help dial that in and make it a simpler process to, to actually know what works with your body. Uh, it's true that um, you know color and how the shoe looks can play an important role in you liking the shoe and that so don't discount that but don't just solely pick out a shoe based on marketing or the, the color of the shoe. Make sure you do follow these three steps and it fits with your shoe. Uh, make sure when you trying on, when you are trying on shoes, you do that in the evening or after a run because that's typically when your foot is the most, uh, it's at its largest and you'd want to be doing uh, your trying on of shoes at that time. And of course using the same thickness of sock that you will be running in. And again, just a reminder, uh, check on that return policy so you can do this step number three and put some miles on the shoe and make sure it does work with your mechanics. And then over time, begin to learn your characteristics. So for me, I know the characteristics of a shoe that works for me. It has to have some drop because I have calf and Achilles issues. So going to a zero drop I've found doesn't really work for me. It needs to be a curved shoe, a shoe that's not perfectly straight but has some curve to it from the heel to the forefoot. I know that it needs to have a narrow heel and a wide forefoot and it can't have too small a volume in the toe box. So again, that's just after experimenting with thousands of pairs of running shoes to learn these are the characteristics. So when I look at a shoe, I can already get a sense of, oh, that's a straight lasted shoe that's probably not going to work with my foot and my mechanics or if it's curved, well now it's got a shot. And so that helps me kind of narrow it down. And then I know the few brands that their last tends to work for me. So you can begin to do the same thing for you. Start making notes of the curve of the shoe, the drop, the stack height, the width in the, the toe box and the instep as well as the heel. And what are characteristics like you? Once you know that, it really helps dial in exactly the perfect shoe for you. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, just a few quick tips to try to help you dial in uh, that, that ongoing process of finding the perfect shoe for you. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you again real soon. Take care.